Hey everybody, it's, uh, what day is it? Day 24 of our physical distancing broadcast uh, here at Wolf Camp in the Conservation College. We are out today at our favorite local wildlife tracking site. It's open. Don't tell anybody where it is because it'll be swarmed and then closed. But anyways, um, yesterday we did some wildlife tracking introduction, the same the day before, some introduction to language of the birds and awareness skills, all the things that you need to pay attention to in order to be able to track wildlife. And um, people think of it as just following a trail, which is what we're gonna do today, partially. Um, but as John Young says, it's really five arts. There's the art of where, the trailing an animal, the art of who, identifying the animal, of course, and we'll look, when we start on a trail, we'll go through some uh, identification traits and um, there's the uh, wh uh, who what and there's the what you know interpreting what the animal is doing which is really important also to determine the species but to know whether it's running or the you know mood of the animal what it's doing uh, and where it's going it helps to know that the when is the art of timing being able to tell what's fresh and what's not uh, how long ago an animal's been there and then there's the why or the art of habitat or the art of uh, knowing where you'd go somewhere in the world in the first place to find an animal. And so it's pretty exciting. I want to spend as much time on this trail as possible. Um, this today is going to be kind of a study in canine tracks because we've got fox, coyote, and domestic dogs to tell apart. Uh, also um, the uh, cervidae, which is deer and elk, try to tell them apart. Uh, maybe follow some of them. There's some other cool tracks out here. Um, including a couple we saw yesterday and the day before, the possum and the raccoon. There's a lot of cool bird tracks. I'm not sure we'll get to all of those because we don't know where the trail is gonna follow. As a matter of fact, that's my favorite thing about wildlife tracking. It's like a detective mystery to figure out. You're basically just following evidence without making a predetermined conclusion. We don't wanna put an animal in jail until we've proven our case. <laughs> in other words, we don't want to uh, make an identification. Even then, it's always a guess. You're only 99% sure. And so, let's start right to it. I'm gonna flip my phone around, Kim's phone, which is broadcasting directly to the Wolf uh, Camp and Conservation hey, College website. Mine's to my personal page. I'm gonna switch mine around, and then I'm gonna hold both phones, and we're, you're gonna actually see exactly what I am seeing. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna switch mine around. Well, I'll take it out of the. There's Lily. The um. <laughs> take it out of here first, and then. Oh, you ready? Yeah, All right. So awesome. everybody, check this out. All right. So this animal right here, we it could have come down this really easy path, but this animal doesn't really like to do that. It came out of this brush right here, um, and the first track that I picked up that's easy well there's a couple back here as well but first track and I, I in the first while here I've laid out some tracks to follow and then we're gonna go without and see what we can that one's um, a little hard to see right now because one of the there's there's some things to think about it with tracking I'm gonna just have you follow and take a look here for a second to see these tracks on the top they, yeah it's on they can tell they can tell they can see it yeah, and uh, for size, well, this, these are big popsicle sticks, kind of fat ones, so yeah, you know. Tape, you um, is to go into the sun. If you're track clear print tracking like this, you want to go with the stay between, have the track stay between you and the source of light. Because if you look at it from the other direction, check this out. Hard to see those tracks, isn't it? Because you can't see the shadows. In, that are caused by the source of light. Matter of fact, sometimes it's easier to track at nighttime because you can control your flashlight. Anyways, this animal is not going in a straight line. It goes here, pops over here. It's hard to see that, but you can see the two little claw marks is all that's showing there. And then here, and we're gonna go into identification as soon as we can, uh, we get to something clear. Now this sand goes dry and hard and wet and then changes and we get to a real clear track we'll we'll uh, identify it but here it comes to a spot where well this animal could go any direction and you think it's going to go straight and it may go down there a little bit but we didn't find much evidence the first time we just think it turned right here and you can see clear track again right there and here and then you know it's going to go up this bank obviously well not necessarily with this animal but most likely 
And so we're, you don't want to get stuck on these hard spots. When you're trailing, you've got to pop out and look ahead. Now, it could have gone over there, and it could have gone over there. And we found, you know, that it did. As you can see, I've got some purple poplar sticks up here. And this one is directly in the sun. And you can really identify it in this one because the shadowing and everything is just perfect. And the, uh, the wetness and dryness of the track is really held. Now check this out. Hey, Kimmer, I need you to hold the phone so I can point, or you can point. Well, no, actually, I do something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got Lily to deal with, so which will help us on tracking. But um, yeah, great. Okay, so notice there's two tracks right next to each other. They're going to be the same side of the animal because this animal uh, usually walks and trots in the direct register, meaning the left foot comes right on top of or next to or near the front foot, and then the next set will be a right foot um, rear going right on top of or near where the front foot was. Okay, so point out that front track on your side there. Um, got four toes. Um, there's this, look at that bit of sand that's dried mm -hmm. and fallen. Do you want me to grab yeah, it? take it out of there. Again. Oh, nope. Push it the other way, yeah. That's fine. Okay, Sorry. well, anyways, <laughs> point out the, t the toes. Two One, two, there. Three, four toes, and then in the front, of course, our claws, and oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and then in the back, or should I say, the uh, heel pad? Check out that heel pad; it's almost straight across. Yeah, it's like a bar. And then in the other one next to it, point out the four toes and where the heel pad is. But the heel pad is really light. This animal likes to be on its toes big time, and the heel rear heel pad is very barely visible. And then. Um, it's also uh, smaller on the right. That rear track is smaller. So this is an animal that has a bigger shoulders and head than rear end. Unlike, say, a bear or a person. They have bigger rear feet, generally, because they, that's where we carry our weight. This one carries its weight on the front. All right. So what animal? You, and you can, if you're watching now, you can um, write in on the comments which animal you think this is. Uh, I gave you some hints earlier. Four toes, four claws, heel pad showing, direct register, trotting. Gonna be a canine of some sort. Question is, we've got red foxes, we've got coyotes, and we've got domestic dogs. Now, domestic dog won't have as tight a track as this at all. Maybe the most in-shape border collie would come close to this, but almost all dog tracks that would bite out here in the wild would be much bigger. This is two M not including claws, it's barely more than two, maybe two and an eighth long on the front track by. By one and three eighths, excuse me, one and seven eighths wide. And then the rear track is only one and seven eighths long by, pull it a little closer to you, yeah, one and a half wide. All right, so this, and also because it's not following a main trail and turning a lot and going in and out of brush and is a little smaller than a coyote is a red fox. All right, so let's keep following it. Here's some more. It's gonna go through some grass, which is fine because it's not that old, but probably the wind has pushed all this grass up since it came through here probably this morning and it's 6 p.m. Pacific right now. But, um, so you're going to have to pop through there unless you can, I mean, you can get in there and look at the tracks, but it's a waste of time when you're trailing. Comes out right there, there. Uh, now, I'm only putting popsicle sticks now on a, every other one or so and see if you can see this track. This one has a little, yeah. And then there, and then here, and then there, and there. In there now here it's getting a lot of exposure to the wind and the Sun and drying out and so it's really starting to crumble here and so the track can look totally different just based on weathering and that's why the wind art of here we go the art of uh, timing tracks is very difficult now here we're going to start coming into another um, track of a different kind of canine this is our nice clear print of our little canine and following and then notice that and it turns here so it could have just jumped right across there but why expend the energy when you can go the easy way right right over here it's easy to jump across it turns left right here and notice we're going to come into this bigger track right here check out these canine tracks 
Now those are going to be, those are about 50% bigger. They're wider. The claws are really prominent, meaning it does not live in the wild. This is an animal that hangs around and doesn't have, need to keep perfect claws all the time. Um, it's fairly, yeah, it's down closer to coyote size, but not quite. But we're looking at definitely coyote not because his claws are too big. Now coming back to that little fox, tight little claws together. Going along the edge here, coming into some stuff that is drying, so it's gonna look different. You can barely see this sort of, barely pushed on some really dry sand there. Here, we, I had to spend a little bit of time, Kim and I needed to spend a little time like, oh, does it go up that way? Does it turn left? Because with a fox, you never know what they want. And we also were like distracted by that track and that track, making sure that it, um, this is way too big from what we're following. Too prominent of claws, again, that little domestic dog. And then here we found one, just barely. And now, you know, does it go straight up here? No evidence, including on top. So I turned um, over this way and sure enough, look at him right there. Cute, cute, cute. And then, you know, could go out that way, but it seems to be wanting to stay on this side. So turns left, goes along the river this direction. Now it's starting to look different because again, this is really different and dried, getting a little higher and drier. Now it's gonna get a little harder because it's going across some rocks and whatnot. And so you can take your chances and sometimes when you're channeling, you just have to go, you know, I'm feeling like it's going straight up here and sure enough, this is an interesting spot because the track is the one that the green is pointing to and the one that the red is pointing to at the bottom of your screen is a different canine that we haven't seen yet. So I turn just to look at it and learn. These toes are a little bigger, a little wider apart. Um, and this is a rear track on a front track here as well. You can see the rear track there stepping onto the front track there and this is we're crossing a coyote track there all right well, let's get back on the fox because we don't want to get distracted so one nice thing about teaching a, a class online is that all the students are actually having to focus in on what i'm looking at <laughs> so great oh this is just i think i'm gonna do this like this from now on all right oh look at that beautiful tracks and beautiful now i noticed that it did go right across. Oh, this is so gorgeous. It hit a really soft area. Again, this is almost exactly what we were looking at before when we were setting the identification. Front track on the left, rear track on the right. Yeah, Kim might plaster that as she showed you how to do yesterday, if you saw yesterday's broadcast. And then it gets so sandy and soft. So of course, it's less distinct, but clearly um, the same age. And there, you can really see it because of the shadowing but uh, not as clear. Now, this section here, check this out. We're coming into some grassy, uh, mixed rocky sort of area. And sometimes it's easier and sometimes it's harder because what if it's fresh grass that's pushed down easy? And this is new grass, so we could try to track that way. However, uh, pretty sure this fox hasn't been out here during the day, at least not after early. And so all that grass would probably have puff, uh, grown even quite a bit since then. Um, however, you can see some tracks like there. Even though there's um, some vegetation, still there's push down. Like there's no, it, there's no dew, raindroppy type stuff in there. The, um, right where there where the blue, to the left of the blue is... Uh, push down there's just the quality of it is clearly fresh same thing here kind of a fresh push down here but harder all right so we're not gonna go track by track because you would get frustrated we would I would get frustrated now you could hope that it goes down on the sand over there but there's nowhere to go and a fox would if they're hunting for sure but um, could go up that way and but I think for trailing say we kind of determined this pattern it's really wanting to follow the, the the side of the creek so river so i think i'm gonna go up to the next sandy spot okay now it go. could go out there where it gets sandy off the left but i'm not sure all right so here we go we're just gonna blow past this going where it a fox might like to go 
and see if we can pick it up after it goes through, after we follow the same, this is kind of a cool trail that we're following. Look at this push down here. There's a, some grass pushed forward right here. Look at that push down grass. And that could have been anything. I'm not gonna stop to figure it out, but here's a little sand. Just, we'll gaze and see if, sometimes a camera can pick up uh, more than even your eyes, uh, you know, can really take things into focus. This is pretty hard pan. I don't see in here first glance. If anybody that's watching live can see anything, Kim's looking at something cool over here. But no, I don't think that's, that's not that's our same easy. quality. Now, right next to it, though, oh, we blew, blew right by some other. Yeah. Look at that old deer track coming toward from the top of the screen. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's a little old, so it's hard to tell. It looks like it is. Good. It's splayed out. Actually, this is an interesting track. This is old. It's a deer track, and it's wider at the top and narrow at the bottom, but that's only because this animal was stepping in some mud back when it was wet and splayed its claws wide, and so it was actually going from the bottom of the screen to the top, going up that direction. What's that right there? Nope. Okay. All right, so let's go through here and see if we can uh, pop out where... If this fox is following its own pattern, that old pattern that it was doing of kind of meandering along the edge. Let's go up and across. Oh, you know what? It's a really nice, easy way through here. I would go through here if I were a fox and down onto this sandbar, much easier walk. I mean, wouldn't you? Animals are much like us, especially the bigger they get. They want to go the easy way. I have to crawl around all over the place. This is all covered with raindrops from the dew every night. Drops off of these trees. And so, nice push down of kind of track there. Uh, deer track through there. Anyways, um, and so every night, it's, it's hard to track through this stuff sometimes. It's, you have to look for general push downs because there's so many indentations that it's hard to see. Oh, now we're coming across kind of a cool track here. Look at this track coming toward us. One right there. It's kind of rounded at the top. Notice that. Not that big. Kimber, it would be really great to, uh, by the way, people that are watching on my personal um, Facebook, I only have 10% battery left. It's really going down fast. And so you may have to switch over to the Wolf Camp, Wolf College Facebook page to watch it live if it dies. Anyway, look at how rounded this um, cervidae or ungulate track is. It'd be great to get a measurement, but it's sure. almost down to the size of a deer, but it's a little too big for a deer. Yeah, and very rounded, like a small cow. However, there are no cows at this spot. And so what's bigger than a deer, still hoofed, animal and round it well if it was a adult of the species that i'm thinking of it wouldn't be so rounded at the front check that out see how round it is ah. i think you're yeah great and so we've got four inches by by the way this is a rear track pushing down onto a front track by about three inches. And it's really round at the top, telling me that this is a very young uh, elk. So we're trailing elk backwards. Here's a couple things not to do when trailing. Going backwards on a trail, it's a much harder. And also, now if you're trailing through brush and stuff, then it's easier to go with your son behind you. But um, the main thing when you're trailing, of course, you wanna catch up to the animal. And so you want to go into the wind. And uh, the river is coming toward us. And so during the day, the wind is going to be going. Unfortunately, we're tracking into the wind right now mm -hmm. because um, heat rises during the day when it's warming up. Uh, at night, the wind, the breeze goes with the flow of the water because uh, cold air, cooling air falls. So we're now, oh. That's right, we we're supposed to be tracking this fox. What are we? <laughs> I'm going on this elk, little young elk track backwards. But uh, let's keep looking. Oh, do you see something? Oh my gosh, yeah, coming back this direction now, probably. 
but look, look, yeah, look at the little fox critter coming back this direction. Yeah. Now it could be the same fox coming back a little later, or before, no, probably later, but uh, it might not be, it's definitely not ours. Hey Kimmer, do you want to check up yonder and I'll, well, actually let's go up here because I don't see the fox right there. So okay, you, you have to go up on here. Right across yep. So maybe was the original trail through that little part of the woods and uh, and uh, it came up, stayed up a little higher away from the water. Let's see if we can pick it up anywhere along here. Got people right here. And uh, remember, as we learned yesterday, always pay attention to the bird language, language of the bird, especially if you're trailing, because if you start hearing an alarm out in front of you a ways from a bird, robins are the best one to get to know. Um, here's our track, uh, a similar track coming back this direction, so that's not ours. Um, let's see, here's the robin, because they're in all, almost all across North America, high elevation, low elevation, dry areas, wet areas. And so just get to know the robin's calls and song and uh, they'll help tell you where almost anything is that you really need to know <laughs> the first couple of years while you're tracking. All right, that's bigger tracks. Still canine, as you can see, these are four claws, four toes, heel pad. That's the closer, but again, the claws are so prominent, not ours. Coming through there. How about you? Got anything over there, Kimmer? Um, Lily on track with anything? No. Uh, there's a canine. There's some birds. Mm -hmm. there's a mm -hmm. Canine right there. Yep. I'm cutting right through. Nice. Yeah. Hey, how much more time do we have? Because we got some cool. I'm sure the. Oh, six twenty-three. Okay, we got six, seven minutes. All right. Well, let's um, let's try to pick us something up else if we okay. don't have time to pick up this particular red fox. It did teach us quite a bit so we want to give thanks for that oh, was there let's yeah, check so... out something right there was something that we found that was kind of cool of a distraction yeah take a look what was it oh these are neat still a lot of canines going around yep coyotes look at this Ooh. bird track going right across here what else are you seeing another bird Ooh. track yeah, so there's one going this way. But this one is yeah, quite different. Large. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It looks like a bird track, and it looks like there's actual feather marks right here. Unless it was somebody that came by and left. But it also has a sneaking sort of look of a um, beaver uh, toes. <laughs> Doesn't yeah, it? Wouldn't do that That's interesting. Really, though, mm -hmm. there, oh, look at that. That's cool. We're gonna, oh, you know what? That almost looks like a toad. We're gonna have to look that one up. And we'll tell you tomorrow. Maybe put it in the notes afterwards. Okay, yep, we're gonna have to here. measure it, look in the book. Speaking of the books, Kimmer, we should probably pull them out and show everybody what we use. Well, I did mention the last two days, so just look at yesterday and the day before his broadcast. Oh, Lily, look at your tracks. That's not Lily. Oh, you sure? No. Oh, you're right. But, I'll oh, take a I look at that nice. oh. Lily was over here, I was just wondering. But yeah, that's right. Take a look. Oh, oh, yeah, here's what we were looking at a second ago. This is a cool track right before we started the broadcast. Have people guess. Yeah, so here's out. a track, and it's the one right next to the red. And then there's the next one, then the next, the next, and the next. How big is this, Kimmer? Um, Let's go one. with two and a half width by. But that one little, and you should point out the little house in the very back there. Right. There's the nail right there. So yeah. there's the pad and the boink. Yep. Toes, uh, birds have four toes, but not all four show up very clearly. You know, they don't have prominent forms. So about two and maybe three, three eighths or three quarters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then include that little claw of the hallux in this case. <gasps> Uh, really? About four, three and a half length. Yeah. So it's this a very is distinctive mm -hmm. shape, though. This is a bird that walks on the ground a lot. One foot Not, in front of the other. And there's a lot of birds that fly that, and this does fly also. Mm -hmm. But that prefer to fly that are walking around in here as well. They love it. Obviously, they oh. have to be foraging. But anyways, go ahead and put into the um, notes if you. Um, 
Diana put, we are guessing a coyote. Oh, that might have been earlier, but anyways, yeah, yeah very close. Um, <clears throat> if you uh, know which bird that is, it's a bird that walks around a lot. Gal Gallinaceous. Definitely walks around a lot. Uh -huh. And then we've got another like bird right here that... And scary loud sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, when you walk through. Another little bird here, passerine, some sort. Let's take a look down this direction. Oh, how much more time do we have, Kimmer? I just want to track forever. Um, just a couple minutes. Okay. Well, let's head down to... Down to the river? Yeah. To the sandbanks? Go down there and see if they... Mm. Yeah, the other day when we were out here, we saw some really cool long runs of um, possum. And so, it would be cool to go down there and fly that. I'm going to head over to the and oh. see what we can fit. Look at those bird tracks going across here get out our Mark Elbrock bird tracking book, Birds, Tracks and Sign of Birds, or any Mark Elbrock book is if you really want to know how to track, get Mark Elbrock books. If you want a Pacific, oh, what do you got? You have, uh, we pick up our tracks again? Oh, I'm stuck on a stick. I know, sorry, running you through the bushes. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is our tracks from yesterday you're talking about? Um, that we taught people yesterday, but now are um, in sand, so they're really hard to make out. Yeah, that's who this is. And this makes sense because the other day when we were out here, this animal was all over the place. Man. Um, okay, so those of you that watched the episode yesterday and before, we tracked this animal the last two days. But it looks completely different because this is totally dry sand. There are two trails, one on the left and one on the right. Put in the comments if you know, if you watched yesterday or the days, which of those, what, well, there's only a couple of animals that we followed the uh, last couple of days. Could be that one. Here's a nice one in this direction. Well, what time is it, Kimmer? Well, I'm supposed to go off at 6 30, so I can just go until the alarm goes off. Yeah. Right? Okay, we'll great. All right, let's go off here and see if we can find any other cool things. Any other cool tracks around here? Um, nothing different. Uh -huh. There's a bunch of mole flying over here. This is interesting. This could be our... Mm, going the wrong direction. Shoot, I thought that might, we might have picked up our fox. I mean, look at this perfect canine track going across the sand. Oh my gosh, the sun is so awesome right now. Um, the rear track lands right in the front track. Hey, Kimber, do you want to demonstrate how that happens? <laughs> I don't bend that way. I'm <laughs> you don't sorry. bend that way? Here, hold on. Yeah. I'll do it. Okay. All right. Is your phone still working? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, rear track goes right onto the front track to go in almost a straight line. It makes it look like the animal's going like this. But Wait, you got to keep do you... doing it further out. I'm too close. Uh, go over here. Yeah, Hang on, Lily. Lily, don't fall. Okay, so. I'm gonna try it right. Let's see, I almost have to. Oh, oh my goodness. Left track, right track. What do you got? Bald eagle. Bald eagle? Oh. Yep. Nice. That was wicked cool. Nice. Um, anyway, so it looks like there's. You gotta left, talk really right, loud, left, husband. Right, left. And so I'm gonna go left, right, left, right. And watch my rear tracks have to go right into my front. It's landed. Oh. Oh, I gotta go up to the baldy. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh sure, just make me get my exercise. <laughs> Hang on, um, no, I don't. I think that here. here. I'll try to zoom mine in. I, I Where's, know I oh, there he is. Yeah. I know I can't zoom mine in. Oh, why isn't it zooming? I don't know if y'all can see it. Big beautiful bald eagle, circling around, it? right up above the trees. It's gonna look hmm. like a little speck of nothing Maybe pretty stopped. much on my phone. <laughs> Well, that's a good way to end. Oh. Too bad I didn't bring my guitar and could sing Eagle Soars. Yeah, awesome. Oh, and some well, swallows. Oh, the swallows this is coming the first right day at us. We've seen the here. Oh, yep, they just arrived in Pierce swallow. County yesterday, I think. Hey, look, look up. What have you got? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Oh. 